Uh, we'll move on. Uh, so there, the Homi Kajikawa, this is from his 2009 um, uh, article. And it's a great article because it goes over kind of, you know, a little bit about whiteness, right? Like just even the, the, the visit making whiteness visible, right? And meaning, what I mean by that is uh, whiteness meaning this, uh, white people, not just people. You know what I'm saying? Like what I, mean, what I mean by that is like calling out whiteness, whiteness, making whiteness bizarre, abnormal, which it is, right? Like calling it out. Uh, you know, they're not just people, you're white people. You, you know what I'm saying? And like that, that was actually a major development. Like, because white people just thought themselves of themselves for most of our history in the United States, at least, as people. And then everybody else was a color, you know, a uh, different color or a different race. But we, we white people, we were just people, you know what I'm saying? And so Kajikawa kind of gets into how the importance of the civil rights movement, because the civil rights movement was the first, you know, real moment where like this invisible thing of whiteness, you know, white became a color. You know what I'm saying? And that's a real important thing is that the civil rights era brought to the fore that like, white was a race, that white was a color, it made the, the, the history and the problematic history of whiteness um, visible to people and called it out for what it, for what it was. And that, that's just a super important thing. And I mean, we see that uh, so, I mean, it's so prevalent in our common discourse right, right now, you know, um, in, 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 in American culture. Um, but you know, then he gets really into Eminem and, and Eminem, you know, um, he describes how, but basically M tried to avoid Vanilla Ice and the whole, cause Vanilla Ice basically, you know, uh, he was really popular. Third base, they were not that popular. The Beastie Boys were, ve were very, were, were very, very popular as well, but not like mainstream selling millions and millions and millions of units like Vanilla Ice. Well, Eminem did, did his units. Eminem sold fucking records, okay? And so what he tried to do is basically his whole career started, you know, specifically in the mainstream music industry, not before with his album um, Infinite, but basically where, like, he's trying to avoid racial, and uh, you know, uh, imitation because of the history and because of Vanilla Ice, you know, because... Every white rapper that came after Vanilla Ice had to face what the fuck that dude, you know, what that dude did, um, you know, and how he did it. So what Eminem does is he plays himself up as an other and his other within, you know, the the culture of, of white people is that he's a blue collar rapper. And I mean, you fucking see this for whatever, two hours on the movie Eight Mile. Like the whole thing is Eminem, working class, you know, Eminem, uh, rapper, MC dude, you know? And that's like, that was like the narrative of his rap career. You know, that was his technique really um, for dealing with questions of authenticity was, um, he was poor. He was working class, you know, um, and, and, and he also didn't hide whiteness. He called it out. He made fun of it, which was what we're going to talk about here. Um, and that's the real important thing is like, as important as like him bringing attention to whiteness, like his, most of his shtick was this blue collar, um, you know, working class MC. And for him, you know, class became the, the sort of demarcation of, authentic, of authenticity. And that was in some ways what he tried to use as a way to, you know, um, you know align himself as being marginalized within, within white culture. Um, but like, yeah, Kajikawa gets into, you know, how Eminem basically in the early 2000s when My Name Is came out um, in, the, in the music videos and all, and all that shit and all of everything that he did is like, he basically re-articulated race. Um, and um, within, you know, rap, which is a genre, which, which is, if you think of it as a genre, which it is, it's black, it's black music, you know? Um, and so anybody 
um, who's not black in that in that realm, you know, has to sort of deal with racial articulation. And um, you know, you know, up until that point, we had rappers take the the um, the paths uh, or techniques of imitation, which didn't work out so well. Uh, immersion, which went okay, but you never really did amazing. Um, and then Eminem went with the inversion. So basically what he does is he makes fun of whiteness. From the jump, from the beginning, he basically makes fun of being white and being a white rapper. He uses it as a moment of parody. He, he basically is just completely self-deprecating about it. And this is his technique, essentially, um, to preempt all critiques that he's a white rapper, that he's just a, you know, uh, another Elvis, that he's another Vanilla Ice, um, you know, uh, and, and so, hey, before you can call me out for being white, I'm going to call myself out for being white. I'm going to preempt your call out, you know, and so he uses his main technique is not only to make fun of himself, but also to rip into other uh, famous celebrities, white celebrities, um, <clears throat> you know, specifically, and, and elements of white culture, celebrated white culture, to distan distance himself from that type of whiteness. And this is really important. But at the end, you know, with all of this, um, you know, to form his, his, his sense of authenticity, right, in, this, in the genre of rap music, he had two other things going. Eminem can rap like a motherfucker. I mean, I can't listen to him anymore. Um... <laughs> But the dude can the dude can rap. I mean, he's got some crazy fast flows. Um, he says some funny shit, and he says some stuff. Um, you can freestyle. I mean, the dude can, the dude can the, he can kind of do it all. He's unlistenable to me now. I actually never really cared for him immensely, um, but uh, that's just my taste. Um, so he had that. He had. Pretty fucking good skills. And he fucking Dr. Dre. NWA Dr. Dre. The chronic Dr. Dre. Making his records and pushing him as an artist. So he had this um, celebrity, this brand name, you know, in, in rap and hip hop. Uh, pushing him, backing him. And it doesn't even necessarily have to do with the fact that Dre is, is a black man. Which... I think that's partly that that partly helps, but the fact that it's fucking Dr. Dre, you know, like that's like not like a a small deal. That's a real big deal. So he parodies whiteness. He's got fucking he's got skills, and he's got Dr. Dre and Dr. Dre beats. You know, I mean. So I mean, it's it's that helped to also create this this sense of authenticity around Eminem.